So for problem seven, so once we get all terms on one side, we can think of this as x squared minus x minus two. What factors multiply to negative two, add to negative one, negative two and one. So you could think of this as x minus two times x plus one. But in the x spot, we're gonna replace it with cosecant x. Then we set each of these factors, cosecant x minus two equal to zero and cosecant x plus one equal to zero. When we solve, we get cosecant x equals two, cosecant and x equals negative 1. Now we don't see cosecant on the unit circle, but you know that the reciprocal of cosecant is sine, and sine is on the unit circle. So we can take the value 2, or 2 over 1, and just flip it, since we're looking at the reciprocal. So now we're going to look at the unit circle and see where the sine is a half. Similarly, if we know that cosecant and sine are reciprocals. The reciprocal of negative one is still negative one. So we're also gonna look on the unit circle, see where sine is negative one. The sine is negative one at 270 degrees. So that's one of our answers. And the sine is one half at 30 degrees and at 150 degrees. So those are our three answers, 30, 150, and 270 degrees. Notice, sine is negative a half here, sine is negative a half here, but we can't include those because we only want positive a half. So for number eight, you again want to get all terms on one side, so that's why we subtracted one, we added sine x, and all terms are on the left side. You then see cos and you see sine. So because we see cos squared, we use our identities and we can replace with one minus sine squared. Now in this problem, we're only dealing with sine, which is what we want. So we're gonna rearrange. There's nothing to distribute in, so bars drop. The positive one and negative one cancel. So between this term and this term, they both have a sine in common that we can factor out. It doesn't matter if you take out a positive sign or a negative sign, you'll still end up with the right answer. So if we take out negative sine x, we're left with sine x minus one because negative sine x times sine x is negative sine squared. Negative sine x times negative one is positive sine. Then from there, you set each factor equal to zero and solve. So we're trying to see where the sine is zero, where the sine is one. The sine is 1 at 90 degrees. The sine is 0 over here at 0 degrees. The sine is also 0 at 180 degrees. If you want to write in radians, you can go for it as well. Either way is fine.